Welcome to the Social Stack, your go-to channel for real estate marketing tips based in technology. I'm Amy Stack, and today we will be covering listing presentations and how to create them inside the Keller Williams command system. So to get started, um, I am going to just pull up command. So I'll share my screen. And actually, something happened with my volume. Give me one second here. All right, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I just wanna make sure I can hear you guys when you do have questions. And can you guys let me know, if give me a thumbs up or a nod. Can you see my command screen now? I see nods and, th okay, great, thanks guys. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go back a screen here because I wanna make sure that you all know how to get to that page I was just done. So I am currently in command, I'm in my own account. You guys uh, will see this page when you log in, this is just the home screen. And where we're gonna hang out today is design. So that's on the left-hand side, the little paintbrush is what we're gonna click on. And there you actually have access to tons of templates in here. Um, I do want to encourage everybody to go to different listing presentation classes as well. Um, if you see the consumer experience or Ignite coming up in your market centers, go check those out. That will really help you come up with some more content. Um, if you want to make this more custom to you and you're not sure what to say about yourself in there, those classes will be very helpful. However, the beauty of command is that we do have a ton of stuff in here ready to go. Um, and then you can customize it as you desire. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that in command, all of the templates that you'll have access to are actually developed by a professional marketing team. So you know that you're getting a cohesive brand across the board. So like we're gonna choose a listing presentation template. Well, there's a buyer presentation template that matches it. There's also open house, just sold, just listed, just closed, just sold, that type of stuff, graphics, flyers, neighborhood stats that will all match that same type of branding. So you don't have to worry about making sure that everything looks the same and it's coming from the same person because the team already did it for you. So kudos to them. Okay, so I'm in designs. And the first thing you wanna do when you're creating something new um, is come up to this button at the top right that says hit create design. Um, on my screen here, if you've never logged in, you won't see any of these little tiles. I've played with lots of things in design. So these are all things I've touched before. If this is your first time logging in, this will be a blank screen and that's totally fine. But we're gonna start by hitting create design in the top right. And today for listing presentations, we're doing print because it's something that you could print out and present to somebody. So we'll hit print and then hit continue. And then it'll load up for us. And the listing presentations are um, pretty big files because they have lots of options for you. So you can see here, we have five different options to choose from. Um, I was just in listing presentation, so it already pulled up for me. Command just kind of remembers the last design you were in. So I'm gonna close this. On the left-hand side, you'll see a list of different categories of our different templates. So you'll find that listing presentation under listings and then listing presentation, and it will load that screen that we're on now. So if you guys wanted to look through some other um, listing related materials, you can just click on these other options. So I want you to take a peek at the different kind of layouts and, and branding that we have here. And then if I go to open house, you'll notice that we have different flyers and graphics that match that same type of feel. So we have this one that I'm that's grayed out right now is got kind of those little dots on it. We have this one that has that kind of thin line outline there. And then if I go into listing presentation, you'll see, oh, here's that thin line again. This one has those fun little dots. So that's what I'm saying when I mentioned that we have that full marketing team that's put together pieces across different parts of your business that are all branded and match each other. So you don't have to worry about that cohesive feel. So today I'm just going to hover over these. And we're just gonna hit use on one of them. So whichever layout or feel you like the most, just hit that use button and it will load in. And of course the template page is first here. 
And what you want to do to get access to all of the other pages, because a listing presentation is more than one page long, is come to the bottom right, and mine says pages 29. So I can go ahead and hit that, and you can see I now have a whole slew of templated pages to choose from. Now, 29 pages is a lot of pages. You do not need to use all of these. So what you want to do is go through these and pick the ones that you want to incorporate into your presentation. Um, so I probably don't need the cover of my presentation to say listing presentation template. So I'm just going to skip that and go to two and see what that is. Oh, and that's instructions on how to use it. So if you ever need a reminder on how to use some of this information inside designs here, that's on that second page. So I can go through to page three. And there's the actual cover of the listing presentation. So what you want to do is click on all the pages that you actually want to bring over and have incorporated in your presentation. So if you don't click on it, it will not be part of your presentation. Now let's say you get into some and there's this one about a neighborhood. There's one here about similar properties. your needs, right? So you're going to want to look through all of that. Um, what I like to do for people that are starting out, why don't you guys, can you put in the chat, let me know if you're a new agent or if you're an experienced agent. Like, is this, is this my first listing presentation or have I made one before? You can unmute or put in the chat. Just let me know where we are with that. Let me open up my chat so I can see that. <laughs> old agent, Tim, you're not old. <laughs> Experience, experience, second one. Okay, so a lot of new, made one before, haven't used yet. Okay, so that's, that's a good mix. All right, perfect. Well, thanks for, for coming to learn something new, you guys. All right, so for new agents, if you guys are really unsure of what type of content you want to put in here, or like, for example, this page seven with the comparable properties, um, some agents that are more experienced will put comparable properties for things that they have sold. So, um, Tim, you said you're an old agent. You could put four properties that are kind of in that same area that you've already sold, right? For a newer agent, you can look for properties in the area. Just go on the MLS and you can pull up uh, comps and put comps in here, right? Some agents don't want to have to do that every time they make a listing presentation, which is totally fine. Um, some people do a whole different CMA package to talk about comps, so this page would not be relevant to them. If that's the case, all you have to do is hit the three dots here and hit delete, and that will not be part of your presentation. So what I like to suggest for um, time sake for everybody is to go through those pages and see which things you definitely want to include every single time you do a listing presentation and start with those pages. Now, if you decide you do want to add things in later, you can do that. So like, what was this one? Your media plan. That's something that you probably always want to present because people want to know how you're going to market their listing. Now you can take time to go in. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this a little more. You might not do all of these steps, right? And this is gonna be the case for any of the pages. So you might not do every single one of these things and that's okay. All you have to do, let's say you don't do postcards. I can just click on the image and I can delete these little, oops, I deleted something I didn't want to go back here. I can delete these little images that are in here or I can also like select these and delete a whole bunch at the same time. So you can absolutely come in and customize all of that. And if you're like, shoot, I deleted the wrong thing, we have this undo button and it'll start bringing it back in. Now you can also change the text if you want to. Here's a tip I have for you is when I click on this little text box, um, I like to use the typewriter feature all the way at the top. It's this little bar up here. If I hover over it, it should say typewriter. There we go. So what happens when I click that is it actually opens up this cool little drawer and I then don't have to worry about highlighting things and accidentally moving my box or anything like that. Um, so I'm just going to add a couple lines and put test test and we'll delete this one word and hit save. 
And you can see now that has been applied to my uh, my little text box right there. That's pretty straightforward. You can resize them. I'm just going to hit undo. And that is how you edit your actual text. Now, let's say you loved this layout and you're like, well, I know that Keller Williams is red, but that's not really my color. OK, that's fine. If you have branding that's a different color, you can come in, select this red bar. And once I've got that highlighted, you see the blue line there. I have some options all the way at the top, these little circles. So that red circle will let me change the color that's in this red box that I've selected. So maybe my color is blue. I just hit the blue and that's gonna update it for me. And I can do the same thing with this one. if I want to change that branding. So that is something that if you want to change colors like that, you'll need to do that, you know, on each page, go through and update the different items. So like, here's the next page. Okay, let's make that blue too. And I want to make my text blue to match. So the nice thing about this is you only have to do that one time, right? Once it's done, it'll be updated for all of your presentation moving forward. So I don't know if you guys noticed that I highlighted all of those little boxes. So I'm just clicking and dragging and you see they're all highlighted. I'm gonna hit the outline here. So this one's not a fill, it's a shape outline. And I'm just gonna hit the blue and now it's updated all of them to blue. So there's a couple of tips for you too is that you can select multiple items at one time to do updates like that. Same thing with open house strategy. Maybe you don't do all of these steps. Let's zoom in so we can see that. So we're going to place a yard sign that says open house coming, right? Get on the phone the morning of the open house to remind people, so on and so forth. So if you don't do this door knocking step, I'm just clicking it and I'm hitting backspace or delete, or there's a little trash can icon all the way in the top right. And now that stuff has been removed from my presentation. I'll make that blue. And then again, I can highlight all of these, go to my outline, make it blue, go to my text, make it blue. And I think that's, you guys are catching on. I see some head nods on how you can, you know, make all that updated. I am going to go back I'm going to close this out so we can get a little bigger here. Um, I'm going to go back up to my first, that header page that I said was going to be the first page of my presentation because there's some elements on here. Let's make it a little bigger for you. That we know we're going to want to update. So that's not me, right? <laughs> it doesn't look like me. So you're going to want to put your own branding on there and all you have to do again is just click that text box. You can double click it and it'll highlight right in there. And you can do all caps if you want. You still have the ability to change that. I personally like to just leave it, like I said, a professional marketing team put this together. So I just match whatever they did. And then you can click on here. And again, you can double click to highlight and edit. I like that typewriter feature. You know, so update. email, website, right, and put your phone number in. Just hit save changes and then all your information will be right there. So the next thing we haven't talked about updating is photos. So this one is a stock photo. You can definitely leave that in there if you want to. Obviously, I want to change my picture. So on the left hand side, we have some tools that we haven't looked at yet. One of them is images. So if I click on images, it opened up to my assets. So these are photos that I've already added into command to save for me. So if you have not done that, you can just hit the add button. So we were in my assets, you can hit add and you can hit this upload button and upload any photos from your computer. Here's uh, one of our agents logos. I'm just gonna pop her logo in there. So now you can see that it's uploading right here. It doesn't have to be a logo. It can be a property image. It can be a headshot. And there it is for me to use right now. 
Um, so I have this Royal Realtors right here. That is where you would put your own logo or your team logo. So if I click on that and I come over to Gina's logo here, there's a circular arrow. This is a, a, a pro tip for you as well. When I hit that circular arrow, it's actually going to replace it in that same exact location. I'm going to hit undo and show that one more time. So you'll notice this Royal Realtors, when I click on it, it's a little rectangle, right? So when Gina's logo, which is a square, is replaced in there, we're not seeing all of her logo. So there's a couple of things we can do. One, I can just click on Gina's logo and it's going to go right into the middle of the file. It's going to be big. I can drag and resize it manually. So you can do that. Or if I do that feature I was saying where I click the logo and hit the replace image button. Let's go ahead and refresh the page. I'm going to hit save real quick. All right. I don't know why that's showing up funky. It didn't do it the first time. Let's try a different image. Hmm. I broke the logo, you guys. That's okay. So let's do this one there. So my image popped in place. And if you notice, my hair is cut off a little bit at the top. And this is a while ago, I had long hair done. Um, so if I double click it, I can actually drag it around and move it into the place that I want it. So all I did was double click this image here and it will show me that part that's grayed out at the bottom. That's the photo that I popped into the placeholder. So I have the ability to be flexible within that space. And I can even resize it. Maybe I want it closer on my face and less of my blazer. Hey, I'm wearing that blazer today. <laughs> and then just hit done when I'm done. And you can see now that's been repositioned as well. And actually that photo looks a little blurry to me. So I'm going to replace it to, with this one. And we can do that same thing again. And maybe that was kind of a low res photo. So that's how you replace the images. And like I said, if you totally want to delete something, just click it and hit delete. And then you can drag your new information where you want to put it. So you can definitely move this wherever you want. But I wanted to show you, you do have the ability to do that replace image as well. Um, you guys will need to upload your own Keller Williams logos into the system. Um, mine I've loaded in the past, so they're in here for me. Oops. And I'm just going to hit replace there. Amy, and you can, yes, if those are in our marketing profiles, can we pull them from that profile? No, you'll have to um, load them into assets. Got it. You want them to come into here. So that's a different part of designs. You can, like I said, uh, go to images and do add and just upload it right here. But this my assets section, that's a, a feature of designs that's outside of where we are right now, which I can show you in just a couple minutes where you can preload things like headshots and logos and your color scheme and any fonts that you use. So that's something that would have to be set up for it to populate into this section. Good question. Um, but this is what I was trying to show you earlier. See how when I replaced that logo, it, it kind of expanded because the logo I, that was in there initially was a little bit shorter. So I can just hit arrow up because I'm still selected on that logo and it's going to move it where I want it. Now, this logo that I replaced it with actually already says each office is independently owned and operated. Um, so sometimes you'll see that language on your materials as well. So I don't need to get on there twice, so I can delete the old one if I want to. You can leave it in there if you want. And then you would just update your address, stuff like that. Okay, so assuming we went through the whole presentation and we picked all the pages we wanted and changed all the colors and added our branding and everything, um, there's a couple of things you can do. One is hit download and you can see I have PDF for printing or I can change this and I can do JPEGs and PNGs. So I still have different options. So if you are physically printing this out and want to hand it to people, you'll want to do that PDF for printing. You just hit download and it will download um, that file for you and you just send it to the printer. Easy peasy. You can bind it if you want to. Um, you can put it in a folder, anything like that. However you want to present it. Now, some people like to do their presentations digitally. 
So you can absolutely do that if you are using a PDF um, system that allows you to kind of flip through, like if you have Adobe or something, you can just use that system to look at your PDF. However, there's this lovely little share button right here. And I can share it to Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, or I have this link that will allow me to show the whole thing wherever I want. Um, I'm going to hit that one more time. I want to point out that at the top, it says right now we're selected on this design. So that means we're only going to be sharing this one page. So if I click the project, that's going to let me see all the pages that I decided I wanted to share. So if I click this link, you can see it's already selected on anyone can view. I can change it to KW or only workplace administrators. Obviously that won't make it easy for you to share with other people. So I'm going to go ahead and click a new tab and paste that link in. And you will see these are all the pages that I clicked on that I said if I click on this, it's going to bring over to my presentation. So these are all the things we clicked on. And all the things I didn't click on are not in here. And you can see I can just scroll through these and I can talk to whoever I want to. I can pull this up on an iPad, on a laptop, wherever I want. If I want to put it up on like a TV screen and then click through, I can do that digitally as well. And then um, Carly had a great question. She said, where does that graphic on Barton Hills come from? Um, she sees it often. So Carly, I believe, got to get to the right page here. This was the one you were talking about. So let me know if that's incorrect. But um, this is, I believe, what she's talking about. And this is one of the pages where I see a lot of people um, who just want to have a presentation ready to go that they don't have to edit at all will leave this page out. Um, I do have agents that tend to work in just a few specific towns. So sometimes they'll make like three pages. Like around here, it would be maybe like Lombard. Um, Glen Ellen, Villa Park, Elmhurst, you know, in my Downers office, Downers, Darien, Lamont, something like that. Um, and they'll just have a couple of pages ready to go. So I'm going to go back into the editor and we'll find that page for you. And if I look over here, here it is, Barton Hills. We'll make that blue like the other ones. Okay. So the text content, you guys will have to populate this information. And that's okay because you are the ones that are the local experts of the area. So you need to prove that you know what's going on in that area, right? So you can pull some of this stuff from List Hub in the MLS. If you're in our MLS, um, you know, we're part of MRED. I know people around the, the country have different stats that they have access to. But that's where a lot of people will pull this type of stuff. Um, but this is a really cool feature in Command, this little snap here. If I go to the left-hand side of my, my uh, little space here, I can click KWLS, it's this house icon. And you can see it's selected on listing right now. Now that's a cool feature that will let you pull in listing information from listings that are active on the MLS. For this one, we want snapshots. So I can go ahead and tap snapshots and I can look for a neighborhood name or a postal code. So the neighborhood names are linked to next door neighborhoods. So uh, that is the next door system. We have an exclusive agreement with them at Keller Williams. So if you guys are with KW, you have access to pull neighborhood stat information for that specific area. Whereas anybody in real estate can pull stats on an entire zip code, you can really get hyper local and get down to the nitty gritty details of that one little area. So that's a nice little advantage you have with that. Um, I'm going to do Lincoln. Oops. And if you're not sure what the neighborhood names are, just put the town name in and it will usually pull up some neighborhoods in the area. And here's Lincoln Glen Ellen. And then it should populate three different options for me. So here is the same layout that we're seeing on the right hand side. If I scroll down, I'll also see just the map view and I'll see the horizontal view. So for this one, we already have a placeholder for it. So I've selected where it says Barton Hills on the map and I'm just going to hit replace and there's my Lincoln stats. And now I put the Glen Ellen information in there and that um, pulls from the MLS and I believe, okay, don't quote me on this. I know I'm recorded, but I think it's a rolling 
30 days of information. And then Carly said, oh, never knew that one. Well, great, I'm glad you learned something new. <laughs> um, these little snapshots are really popular for like door knocking, um, or if you're sending out like a prospecting email or a postcard, these are great to put on there as well. And you have access to this from anywhere in command. So you could make a social media graphic for it as well. Um, it doesn't just have to be in your listing presentation. Uh, so like I said, you'll have to put in the updated information here. So now that we know that's uh, Lincoln, I can just update that. Oops. Oh, L-I-N-C, oh, that, that just looks weird in all caps. I guess I did spell it right, okay. <laughs> and um, I think that is, that's pretty much like a good overview of everything. Um, you can, one thing we didn't talk about is how to rename it. So we can do, you know, class test. And you can always go to file, save. I like to use the auto save. So if you don't have that checked, I definitely recommend doing that. Um, but that save is a, a, you know, we always want to save before you close. And if you guys are getting real, um, I don't know what the word is. Like, let's say you're you're moving things around and you want to make sure that everything's lined up real well. Like I didn't move any of the graphics. I let the design team lay that out for me. But we do have this cool grid under file that will let me see the exact fine line if you're really if you're kind of creating new stuff or moving things around and you want to make sure that it's lined up that's all under file there's grid and ruler guides and for printing you can do manage bleed and safe area and it will show you where it will get cut off for printing so those are some extra pro tips i've got for you as well so we'll close out of that and uh i don't know what this red box is here All right, so that is how to edit the actual listing presentation. And I want to bring up just a couple more things because, like I said, most people tell me they just want something they can print and go with. So we're not going to have pages like this in there because you don't necessarily want to have to customize that every time. Now, if you are always doing that same area, definitely do it. And you don't have to do just Lincoln, you could do all of Glen Ellen and pull stats for that, right? Uh, but for people that do want to make maybe a couple of different ver versions or want to customize that front page saying listing presentation for Mr. and Mrs. Seller, you know, whoever it is, um, let me, oh, I got to get out of my preview here. I broke it. I think I froze my computer, you guys. Let's refresh that page. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to hit done. We've already hit save. And if you hadn't hit save at that point, it will probably, when you hit done, it will say you want to save your changes. Just hit yes. But now here's the presentation I just made with you guys now. And if I hover over it, I have these three little dots. So I can rename it or I can make a copy of it. So if I want to make a copy, I'm just going to select that. And now you can see it says copy of class test. Oops, I got click happy. I did it twice. We'll hit rename. We'll call it class test two. And then I can come in and I can edit this one and I can have my class test one all set up with Lincoln. So maybe I call that Lincoln listing presentation. And then I could just go and edit the one page for my new one for my next neighborhood. That way, I don't have to go in and change all of my colors and rechoose all my pictures and, and edit all my text and update whatever pages I want to add. So make one presentation that you absolutely love and then just make copies of that if you want to make any variations. That way you're not losing the original content you put in there and you're not having to recreate and re-edit every single thing you did. So that's going to be a huge time saver for you as well. Um, I know we're a little bit past the half hour, but I mentioned I would show you how to do that assets. Do you guys want me to show you how to update that brand asset section really quick? I yes, see please. Okay, perfect. Um, I do have a class on this that goes into a little bit more detail as well. Um, but I'm going to show you just a quick how to get in there. So when you go to create a quick, uh, when you're in designs, hit create design, 
You can choose anything you want. It doesn't matter. We just need to get to the template screen. Um, and at the top, I guess I shouldn't say it doesn't matter. You need to choose either social or print. All the way at the top, we're in templates right now. My designs will take you back to the templates that you've already worked with, but there's an assets button. So if I click assets, I now have the ability to upload colors, fonts, images, text, et cetera, that are pre-programmed into the system for me. So you can see I've added a couple of colors that maybe I use a lot. So if you have brand colors outside of the Keller Williams palette, you can just hit your little plus sign and you can toggle through these to see if you have a hex code, your RGBs, HSL, so you can put the exact percentages in there or code numbers, or you can go like this, pick the color you want, or you can hit this cool little eyedropper and hover over something. So maybe I like that blue in the Google, we did blue already. Maybe I like that green in the Google Drive logo. I'm gonna click that and it matched that color exactly for me. So I added that color in. For images, you just click on images and on the far right, there's an upload button. Upload any photos you wanna have quick access to on a regular basis in command right there. Same thing with logos. So this is where you could upload all your market center logos, your team logo, your personal logo, and then they'll always be in there anytime you're working on anything. If you're doing some more advanced stuff with elements, I don't have any in here, you could upload that. Videos you wanna use all the time. If you have um, text that you use frequently, you know, phone number, email, address, you can upload that here and there'll become options for you to just click and drop into your, uh, your, your designs. The one question I get a lot is fonts. Um, so if you go to use a site like DaFont, uh, you can go and download fonts for free and upload them to command. So if you don't like the font suite or you have your own font that is not offered in command, you can upload them right here. There's also this web font button where you can go search for your own fonts as well. So I'm going to just back out of that. But that is just a quick overview of the brand assets. So you can preload everything in here so that when you do go to anything in here, I'm going to go to something different. Let's go to buyers. Let's go to neighborhood snaps. So this is what I was mentioning could be good with those little snapshots. We'll just use this one. Any design you're in, when you go to my assets, the things that you've uploaded will be in there. And then when I am in my color here, remember I showed you how to change your color. You see how there's library colors and template colors? If I go to library, here's that color palette I had made in my brand assets. So that's available for you. And in my logos, like you saw before, my logos are all in there for me. If I had uploaded a font, that would be available in my fonts, so on and so forth. There's my assets and my text that I use a lot. So there's my YouTube channel. Here's my little tagline. So I can just click it and it would pop right in. Oh, that's a whole bunch of stuff. That's my email signature. <laughs> uh, but that's a little, little insight to the assets, which is a great way to save time as well. So I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna see who has questions about what. No questions, no questions. Hi, Amy, um, Sarah Duco here. I had a quick question about the um, pictures that are in any of the different brochures, postcards, or anything that are on there. Mm -hmm. Are we able to just use those images there, or do you have to replace them? I don't, you can use anything that's in there. Um, if, and like I said on that little house button that said KWLS, um, if you have a listing that's active on the MLS, you can actually pull your images directly from the MLS. Um, you can also use that add button and upload manually as well if it's already on your computer. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, well, I do have an appointment that is um, coming in. So I do, I want to thank you all for being here today. Um, next week, we're going to go over some flyers. So come back same time, same place, and we'll do some flyers in designs, um, probably one of these neighborhood ones. <laughs> and um, I hope to see you then. So thank you again for tuning in. And we'll be live if you want to rewatch and follow along on uh, YouTube on Saturday morning at 7am. I'll see you later.